So let's continue. Thank you very much for being with us on these sixth in OA Patients World Congress organized by OAFIV from the AXA Auditorium in Barcelona and also st streaming through our YouTube channel for Spanish and English speakers all over the world. We'll be talking about a treatment alternative to knee pain, always looking for possibilities to improve on our quality of life. And these are two top figures in our scene. You know already Dr. Muller, because she was yesterday with us as a rheumatologist and director of the Paul Institute of Rheumatology. Round of applause for Ingrid. And next to her, and he was also part of that panel discussion because he's, he was also part of that success behind these 25 years of the contraprotection. The head of medical staff at Atletico de Madrid Football Club, Dr. Jose Maria Villalón. So, chitosan as a treatment alternative to knee pain. I think you have a presentation with you. So, feel free. Muchas gracias. Sí. Muy bien. Tú dirige. Pues aquí estamos y es well, Here we are. It's a privilege having such a distinguished figure to talk about knee pain and eventually becoming the bad guys that come at you with a needle. But then there are good intentions behind and good outcomes often. Our patients are much different and I think that this is why it's good with different patients, with different ages and different settings. Yes, Ingrid, in, I'm also feeling privileged on sharing this panel discussion with you on this ongoing conversation. And I'd like to thank the organizers of this World Congress for OA patients, which I think is something to celebrate because indeed this is an outstanding event. On OA, osteoarthritis, we see two different things. You may see the OA patient on a daily basis, and I often see OA patients which used to be athletes or about to conclude a, their athlete career, and their locomotive system has been suffering a heavy demand, and therefore with a greater wear and tear. And here, in the case of an athlete, you need to decrease the risk for these wear and tear so that this OA does not develop, so that to prevent the early appearance, the early onset of all these symptoms, such as rigidity, pain, swelling, muscle atrophy. Once you have an inflammation in any of our joints, the muscles in the guide that lose their strength. And often, these inflammations make it so that even with physical exercise to provide a greater tone to the muscle, you cannot reach out because there is an inflamed uh, site. And then the suffering of the bones. The bones be behind the cartilage, which are suffering, which may be having bone and joints, minor or major fractures leading to pain. This is what brings pain in our joints. And then the joint ripple effect that takes place. And we have no proper diagnosis on the 
early stages of this joint decay, and often they go unseen in our early scans and tests. And when it comes to prevention, it would be interesting to see how, through genetic studies sometimes, but also with the scans on the locomotive system, but Sometimes we are not able to find about that fledgling injury or with the initial signs and symptoms of so. And then we have some amending risk factors and non-amending risk factors. I mean, we have the age we have and that will cannot be changed, but then we may think like, for instance, BMI, the body mass index, if it's too high and you can have an impact on it, you can decrease that obesity or overweight. Or we can see how some operations may lead to an altered state of that joint and then the proper activity for each individual and for each of these joints. And Ingrid, yes, this is the prevalence of OA in Spain. When talking about infiltrations, you know that OA is really prevalent in our knees, and therefore we need to have several tools in order to alleviate or in order to minimize and to act upon knees arthritis. And here we are seeing some of the prevalence in the arthritis. Much like here, we are seeing how OA develops as we are seeing it in through these x-rays. And if you suffer from arthritis, you know that there is this bone pinching and the osteocytes whose role can be argued and more than anything, it's the loss of the cartilage. And as Dr. Villalon was saying, any processes that will take place subchondrally, the bone edema and the pain brought to a patient with knee arthritis. Are our treatments the same? Well, theoretically, they have the same foundations, I would say but they are not the same treatments. Even though the therapeutical means we may have are much alike, maybe for top athletes. There is a great uh, stress there on these therapies or the great uh, resorting to these therapies, but pharmacological and infiltrations, physical therapy, counterprotection, what we've been talking about, the occupational therapy and so on, weight loss, well, this is all counterprotection. And non-steroidal painkillers, steroids, as we have seen through the morning session, and then finally, surgery. Sometimes that's where you have to end. Yes, I think that we agree on that. This is what we have in our toolkit, and this is, and this is why we're always happy and willing to learn about new treatments and learn about their efficacy. We were to talk also about infiltration techniques, but not just techniques, but rather the substances we use for infiltrations. You know that infiltrating here means introducing a liquid within a solid body. You can infiltrate on several sites, not just around the knee, but on any accessible site. Questions is when, what, and finally, how are we to infiltrate, and that's more on the medical side of things, but in order to build trust on the patient. Anyway, when do you infiltrate? We decide to do an infiltration 
and this is something that we have often discussed, in trying to delay the wear and tear of the m with molecules of the 21st century, which are nutrients to our soft tissue in the joints so that they grease the joints because often the liquid is lacking, the physiological liquid within the joint, and not just the liquid, which is less when regarding volume, but it also is poorer nutrients-wise. And this is why using this type of nutrient-based infiltrations, it makes it for a better breathing ground. You are nurturing the cells that are still in there, but you want them to work properly and you want them to be compatible with a high load of physical exercise. Great. I think that we are kind of in the same wavelength, and I would say that probably joint pain is also another reason for infiltration, given that our patients are of a different age and they have several comorbidities and several comedications, so that they are often on several different medications, and we try and prevent an overuse of medications, and so we resort to infiltration as a treatment technique. And again, as we need to resort to common sense, we will not use an infiltration if there is an active infection, if there is a major injury on the skin. I think that this is a medical thing, but anyway, this is something that we consider on, on our day-to-day. -day. Are you using corticoids? As Ricardo was telling us, uh, the moderator, the host of this Congress and a good friend of mine, he always says, will he be on the field with an infiltration whenever a football player is on the field by being infiltrated? Well, what happens here? If the football player is in pain, we need to alleviate that. And an alternative is corticoids. It's true that we do not like overusing this medication, but it may work in some instances for a couple of weeks, removing the swelling and the pain so that they can play. And if we are to play the final match for the European League, we'll see what happens. Well, our players are in a different league, but their league is like I have to do the chores, I have to attend my son's wedding, or I have to survive this, or I have an acute inflammation and therefore we need to resort to corticoids. What about hyaluronic acid? Yeah, I love it. This has been a treatment alternative in recent years, I think, that we presented this some 25 years ago with Mr. Burgess and Mr. Villa. I always say it's 25, but they might say it's a bit more. But anyway, this is a natural compound in the soft parts of the joint, there is an endogenous secretion of hyaluronic acid, and we enrich that through intra-joint infiltrated by improving on the viscosity of the synovial liquid, then enhancing the ability for impact absorption, and therefore improving on the intra-joint um, area and with no side effects that we have seen, and it has allowed us to have a very meaningful tool for both top and non-top athletes, because now physical exercise is done by many, unfortunately. Yes, we use also hyaluronic acid ourselves, and it's true that for some patients, we have very good outcomes. But we all know, and that's true as well, that some patients have gone over these tools and 
second, third, fourth choice, and yet things did not work out for them. So, this is why we're so happy when we see someone coming up with a new molecule and after lab tests on animal models is safely provided for the human models and they are giving us a treatment alternative because I guess that's also the case for you in that there are patients that do not respond be it because the arthritis is much in bloom or there are some other aspects having an impact on the pain but anyway it doesn't respond to medical treatment maybe position and hygiene steps are not the ideal anyway it just doesn't work and for that is why we may use chitosan and i think that chitosan this is a polysaccharide and therefore a fully natural product and we is not something that we are afraid of but it has shown its efficacy on patients that did not respond well with other treatments this does not mean that it's a third line. I know that this must mean that indeed it has a good efficiency. It's also proven to be safe. And safety is something that we need to take into consideration for our patients. Even though, and this is worth mentioning, after the injection, the patient may feel pain. And we need to warn them beforehand and we need we need to let them know, like maybe a day or two days later, they may feel a bit of pain after the injection. I agree with you in that we are moving forward. There are new molecules. And at six months, apparently, this is where how long the effect lasts. And for those that are not responding or that have tried some other treatments and well we need to provide them with some alternatives and this is a true alternative this is a new molecule a vegetal extract from fungus and it is an intrajoint treatment here we are using it on the knee and even for the most advanced arthritis stages, there are some significant effects. Yes, this is the idea, indeed. And the degree of satisfaction by both a patient and a doctor goes to show that it works, indeed, because people are really satisfied with it. And you can see this reflected in these charts where there is a significant degree of satisfaction with this product. Of course, we infiltrate in many different ways. And in our case, we always try to guide our infiltrations, which does not mean that without an, a U.S. technology, it, will, it cannot be done. Yes, um, if you, we want to make sure that it's done on the right side, so a U.S. guided infiltration gives you this added reliability. To us, the U.S. technician is like uh, a must, in much like you would have in other disciplines, and sometimes it's not just having a US scan, but here you can see how the needle reaches the interjoint space and therefore it gives you a greater reliability on you, Ingrid, as you are a much an expert on ultrasounds and you are indeed, uh, you have been teaching us on that. Well. I must say that for the faculty students, 
we teach them to use the needle both blindly and non-blindly because you're not always or you do not always have the possibility of having a U.S. A scan and, and even I mean surgeons for instance I think that they wouldn't find it hard to puncture them without the use of a U.S. scan but we teach them about this because we know that this is a recent development and when we have used Kytosan we have done this with a US guided. Something that it's worth knowing for the doctor rather than the patient is that when doing a Kytosan infiltration you cannot do it if the knee is so swollen because if it, there is too much of an inflammation first you need to empty it you may have to go for corticoids first and then a week after then you can have the chitosan infiltration that's where you would have the, the greatest rate of efficiency for the product and you would prevent the potential effect of pain after the infiltration for most patients i agree it's true that this would be a way to minimize the site pain or since the infiltration is a vegetal extract yet no side effects have been noticed after the infiltration but maybe using an anti-inflammatory drug before could be useful to prevent this post-infiltration pain. I think that we have attended an unrepeatable uh, conversation, a discussion on how we this is being seen from the patient's viewpoint and from the athlete's viewpoint. Uh, I'm, I did not want to interrupt you on this conversation, but I've written down that Ketosan is natural based. But where can we find Ketosan? It's a vegetal extract. Non. It's fungus based. If you know your mushrooms, your fungi, you know about yes, the it's the bread mill bun. And it's been used now on human beings. And you were talking about side effects. You mentioned about the post injection pain. Can we do something to prevent that? To prevent these. Uh, I think. Arthrocentesis that without liquid probably will have less pain after the injection and maybe using intrajoint corticoid the week before may help preventing the pain but who's having that. The patient that's infiltrated might not be the best choice here, but also sometimes might be useful for some other patients. But let me say one thing. The post-injection pain doesn't remove its efficacy. The fact that it's painful doesn't mean it works less. It just means that, well, you came here for pain and you still are feeling pain, but then some two, three days, the pain will go away or will decrease, and then you will improve nonetheless. So this is something that we need to take into consideration. The satisfaction being 90% for doctors, 86% of for patients, is this a high percentage? I mean, is it usually seen? Yes, it's a uh, percent. And 
the one that may be in pain is the patient. But anyway, a good doctor that knows how to do their infiltrations with their know-how will often produce no pain, no major pain. I mean, when in vaccinations, for instance, or intramuscular injections, there might be some slight painful component, but I think it's worth noticing its positive effect rather than the local adverse effect that might be happening. And Ketosan as an alternative to knee pain. Round of applause for them, please. Now another round of applause for Dr. Verges because we will have another breakout congress because they will now be repeating this. Last year we did something much similar when we connected with an Italian Congress. There were some 350 doctors, so that patients and doctors had this online exchange. But this year, what we have decided to do is that starting at 2, half past 3, and this is for doctors, Dr. Müller and Dr. Villalón will and have a lecture so that the Spanish doctors know on the use of their product. And I would like to thank Umbrella and Kiomet. This product, by the way, is approved by the Spanish Medication Agency. And I would like to thank Umbrella for having chosen this Congress to introduce this new treatment in Spain. You know that we at OAFI want R&D to take place to improve and to count on us. So I'm really happy to have yet another treatment tool. And I think that this is worth an applause, isn't it? So this is why I'm asking you that whenever attending a healthcare practitioner and they claim there is nothing that can be done, you can hand them my business card and tell them to call me. There are many things that can be done. And I mean, we've been talking about this for several hours, so it means that we can be doing many things on OA. And yours has been a masterclass. Both doctors are, in my view, top experts, but also good friends that have been in the front line. They've always been there. So thank you very much for being here. I often get moved, so... so Dr. Villalón, we already gifted to him the tree of life, and this time it will be for Dr. Müller. I don't know what happened last year. She was touring around and in speeches in, I mean, she's often in Rochester, in Mayo Clinic, because she's a well-known ultrasound expert. And so we would like to give her this tree of life, just like we did back then for Dr. Villalón. I wish you many more years helping out the people, the patients. So please keep your health. <laughs> this is one of the true highlights of this Congress. <laughs>